Okay, so you've got a Google Pixel 10 or you're thinking about getting one. Well, either way, you're in the right place because I'm about to show you how to unlock the full Googliness of your new Pixel. Googliness. <laughs> Nothing funny. And if you stick around all the way to the end, you'll discover a bunch of Pixel customization tricks, some of which only the pros know. So let's get into this, starting with the basics. The first thing that you'll probably want to do with your new phone is customize the wallpaper. Here's how you can do that. Hold your finger down on an empty part of the screen, go to wallpaper and style. There are some brand new features here, which I think are really, really cool and actually can make your wallpapers even more useful. So if you tap here where it says more wallpapers, you'll see this section called live effects. If you tap on this, now you can choose an image from your library. So once you've chosen an image, you can choose to add a shape around that image and you'll notice the image kind of pops out from the shape. So that kind of looks cool. You could change the contrast here in the background. You can also change the tone of the background a little bit if you want. And here's where it gets really cool. If you go to weather, you can actually add dynamic weather effects to the wallpaper. So right now it's cloudy at the top here. Here's how it will look if it was foggy, if it was raining, and you could change the intensity of these effects as well with this slider. And to make this wallpaper more useful, I recommend not choosing any of these and just leaving it on the local weather. That way it's gonna use the weather in your area for the effects on the wallpaper. I'm in England and of course it's cloudy today. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna be seeing most of the time. But occasionally I will see this, sunshine. But for now, it's gonna be clouds. Okay, here's the second wallpaper trick. Let's say you wanna create something truly unique. If you hold your finger down on an empty part of the display, if you have one, go to wallpaper and style, go to more wallpapers again, and then here you will see the AI wallpaper section. Just tap on that. If you've had a pixel before, this won't be new to you, but they have improved it, so it might be worth taking a look. So let's say, for example, imaginary. The words here that are underlined are the ones you can change. So we can change bicycle to bridge, we could change flowers to wood, and we could change the color scheme here to blue and indigo. And one of the best things about doing this is the fact that it's highly unlikely that anyone will have the same wallpaper as you. And if you want some inspiration, you can just hit the I'm feeling lucky and that will generate a random image for you. And if you hit the little drop down at the top, you'll see all of the different categories. There's now more than there was before like this new one, X-Ray, that's kind of cool. Okay, here's one more wallpaper trick before we move on to something completely different. Once again, hold your finger down on an empty part of the screen. Wallpaper and style. More wallpapers. This time, go to Emoji Workshop. This is definitely one of my favorite wallpaper tricks because you can create something quite unique and you get this really nice effect on the wallpaper when you're using the phone. So what you can do here is just get rid of the ones that are here, choose your favorite emojis from the selection down here at the bottom of the screen, whatever you like. Once you set up your favorite emojis, just hit the little tick box and now it's added them to the background. If you go to patterns, you can now choose how these animate in the background and you can even choose the size of the emojis. So that kind of looks cool. And then if you go to colors, you can choose the palette for this particular background, we'll go with the purple. And just like before, you can choose whether to add this to the lock screen and the home screen or just one or the other. I'm just gonna have it on the home screen because I wanna keep that Yoda weather wallpaper on the lock screen. There we go, we've created the emoji wallpaper. And one of the cool things about this is it kind of shifts around when you're using the phone. And actually, if you look, when you touch the screen, they kind of move like they're on a canvas, which is a really nice effect. I've not seen this on any other phone. Okay, here's another customization tweak that I think you might want to do on day one. If you hold your finger down on an empty part of the home screen again, wallpaper and style again, this time we're gonna swipe across to the lock screen. Now on this page right here, if you swipe up like this, you will see the clock options, the shortcuts, and also notifications and more settings. Here's something that you might want to do. If you go to shortcuts, by default, the one on the left will be set to the Google Home shortcut. So this is useful only if you have Google Home devices. If you don't, there is literally no point of it being set to home. What you might find more useful is something like the torch or do not disturb. On the right side, this will be blank. And as you can see, I've set it to wallet. There are other ways to access the Google wallet and this might be a good one for you. So set it up to whatever works best for how you're used to using the phone. If you're coming over from Apple, there is another tip which I'm gonna show you guys, which I think you're definitely gonna to wanna to do when it comes to accessing the wallet. I'll show you that shortly. The next thing you probably wanna do is change the lock screen clock. 
So if you go to the clock section, you'll see the options that you have. Some of them are a bit crazy <laughs> and you can actually customize these a little bit. So this is the one that I'm gonna go with. You can change the color to contrast nicely with your wallpaper and you can adjust the size as well. There's only two sizes, there's large and there's small. So choose whatever works best for you. And actually there is a little hidden setting that can improve the clock on the phone. We'll come back to that. So staying within the wallpaper and style settings, this time we're gonna to go to the more lock screen settings. This is actually kind of a safety measure that you should put in place. Part three of three in this video series is actually completely focused on security settings and optimizing the device. But I'm just throwing this one in here because it's to do with the lock screen. So within these settings right here, you'll see this, add text to lock screen. So this text will be visible to anyone who looks at your phone, even if it's locked. So the best use case for this is to add some information that if one day you do lose your phone, the person who finds your phone could actually contact you. And that's assuming that they're not complete. And if you're lucky and they are a good person, yeah, they'll use this information. And this is how that will appear. All right, so you might be looking at my phone right now and thinking, how have I got five icons? Because the default setting for this phone is actually four. And the option to change this is actually kind of well hidden on this phone. If you do want to make the most of the space on each display, here's how you can do that. If you hold your finger down, empty part of the screen as usual, go to wallpaper and style. Whilst you have your home screen selected, if you swipe up from the bottom, here is where you'll find the layout. It's not called grid on this phone, like on pretty much every other Android. And you only get four options. So you've got medium, which is the standard setup. You've got large, so it's literally three icons per row. And then you've got Excel, which is just kind of ridiculous. I personally like to have as much in one place as possible. That's why I set this to small, and that's how I'm able to add so many widgets to the home screens. Okay, a lot of people don't realize this, but apps are kind of designed to capture your attention and draw you in. That's why I have all my social media apps all the way on the third page in a folder so that they're harder to find and I'm much less likely to get caught in a doom scroll. So this is one way of dealing with it, but here's another. Once again, hold your finger down, empty part of the screen, go to wallpaper and style. With the home screen selected, if you swipe from the bottom up, here you will see the icon section. And this is where you can turn on the themed icons beta feature. So this essentially takes the system color theme and applies it to all of your icons on your phone, making them far less distracting than they were originally. It won't apply to every single app, but it will apply to a lot of them, including the social media apps. So if you wanna be less distracted, maybe try out the icon color themes. So if you're liking the look of my phone right now and you're wondering how did I get this kind of blue and purple and dark blue color scheme, well, here's how you can do that. I feel like I've said this a hundred times now. Hold your finger down on an empty part of the screen once again and go to wallpaper and style. Just like before, we're gonna scroll upwards a little bit. At the top here, you'll see the color section. This will adjust a lot of the system settings on your phone. And what it tries to do is choose color schemes based off of the wallpaper that you're using. So the one I've got right now is this one. There are quite a few different ones to choose from. So just choose one that really works well for you. If you're not happy with any of these kind of collections of colors, you can go to other colors here and there are more options like this dark one, which is kind of cool. And then you've got these solid colors and also right at the end, you've got more two-tone colors as well. But I'm gonna stick with this one for now. Okay, for some of you guys, when you see this little battery icon up here right now, you might think it's half full or maybe half empty. And there'll be some of you that wanna know exactly what's going on with the battery. And for you guys specifically, you're gonna appreciate this one the most. So within your settings menu, scroll down to battery. At the bottom here, you'll see battery percentage. This will add the exact amount of battery percentage to the battery life bar at the top. And whilst we're here, here's a little bonus tip. If you do find yourself far, far away from your phone charger or a power bank and you're running out of juice real quick, what you can do is come back here, go to the battery saver and enable the extreme battery saver. And you can even customize how extreme this battery saver is. Okay, here's a feature to switch off by default that I think a lot of you guys will want to switch on on day one, but you might struggle to find it. Here's what I'm talking about. Jump into the settings on the phone, scroll down to display and touch and enable the always on display. Now, if you tap on this, if you want your wallpaper to show faintly on the always on display, then make sure you enable this. 
And if you don't, you'll just have the black screen with the clock. So this is how the always on display looks now with the Yoda image kind of blurred out in the background. Now, remember earlier I was talking about how you can customize the clock a bit more. There's a kind of hidden setting here and it's a feature that I think Google need to work on a bit more, but it is available and you might as well test it out. Go into your settings again, go to display and touch, tap on lock screen, and here you will see the dynamic clock option. Now this apparently is supposed to adjust the clock size based off of what's on the screen. So my understanding of this is that it should adapt the clock to the wallpaper or whatever's on screen with the clock. Test this out and see if you can get it to work. It is here, <laughs> it is a feature, but at this point in time, I haven't seen it work very effectively. So do let me know if you get this one working. And now let's move on to a little bonus tip, which is really, really cool. Staying within the settings menu and staying within display and touch, if you scroll down a bit, you will see the screensaver option. So this is a graphic that will pop up when you're charging your phone. By default, it's just the everyday clock, but you can customize this if you want to. For example, this is how the date and weather shows right now. There's a second version and even a third version of that. You can also theme the clock, whether it's light mode or dark mode. Dark mode obviously makes the most sense if you're gonna be charging overnight. This clock is kind of boring. These ones are way more fun. So you can have some of your favorite photos from the Google Photos library. If you do use Google Home devices, you can have the controls for that. You've also got the Pilot Bold clock, which is kind of cool. And there's the Pixel Weather clock as well. So when you are charging overnight or anytime really, and your phone screen is switched off, this is the display that you'll get. And if you are gonna be using this feature, at night, then just make sure the low light mode is enabled. And there's a couple of extra settings here if you wanna have a look at those. Okay, since we're talking about the weather, the Google Pixel phones has one of the nicest weather apps out there. I've got the weather widget right here. If you wanna add this weather widget, it's very simple. It's the same as the other widgets here. All you need to do is hold your finger down, empty part of the screen, go to widgets, find the Pixel weather widget and just add it to the screen. The great thing about this is it's also a shortcut to the app, which can be customized to be more useful to you specifically. So this is the default layout. What you can do is let's say you want the air quality index near the top because that's important to you. If you hold your finger down on it, you can now place it higher up within the app. Let's say the pollen count is important. Again, you can move these things around and really customize the Pixel Weather app so that all of the important information that's relevant to you is right near the top. And something that I absolutely love about this app is the AI weather report at the top, which gives you a sort of summary of how the day is gonna be. I just find this super, super useful. All right, so you've probably heard it a couple of times in this video and maybe in part one of this three-part series, the notification sound that I've got. The amount of events that I've been to where everyone's got the same device and the notification goes off and then everybody looks at their phone, yeah, it's kind of hilarious. And it's because they don't do this. Go into the settings, go to sound and vibration, scroll down to notification alert, and here you'll find some really nice notifications that are native to the Pixel. So I do recommend spending a bit of time going through these, listening to them, finding one that will capture your attention. Don't worry about what everyone else is doing. If you want the same sound that I use, it is within the retro wrist and it's called the reward. <laughs> And if you really wanna use something custom, you can go to My Sounds. If you have audio on your device, like an audio track or something, you could use that. All right, here is a nice customization feature. And the great thing about this one is even if you don't have official Google Pixel Buds or the Pixel Watch and things like that, you can still use this. So these earbuds are linked up to this phone and the case also has its own battery life. And one of the cool things you can do with this phone is hold your finger down on the home screen, go to widgets and go to the battery widget right here and add this to one of your home screens. You can also resize this so it fits nicely. And you'll notice, not only have I got the phone battery at the top, I've also got the left and right earbuds and the earbud case, even though these are not Pixel Buds. This will also work for smart watches and things like that. So it's actually a really nice widget to have on this phone. When you're disconnected, it will just show the battery on the phone itself. Okay, here's a really well hidden trick on this phone. So if you jump into the Google app, one way you can do it is by hitting the Google icon down here. Another way would be to actually go to the app in the app drawer and tap on it here. Hit your little icon in the top right corner. Go to settings. 
These are the settings for your Google search bar, also Gemini and the Google Assistant. If you go to Google Assistant here and you scroll down to where it says nickname, you can actually teach the assistant how to say your name so that it will actually call you by name when you speak to it. It does suggest that you spell it out phonetically so that how it sounds as opposed to actually how you spell it. You get the idea. So this is a cool little customization tweak for the assistant just to personalize it a bit more for yourself. Okay, this next tip is kind of a usability hack as opposed to a customization tweak, but it is a very, very powerful feature that is switched off on day one and that you should switch on. So if you open the official phone app in the top left corner, if you go to the three lines and go to settings, right at the top of this page, you'll see the hold for me. So this is a fantastic feature for when you're on a call and you're in a queue and you're waiting or someone's told you, can you hold for a minute? What you can do is activate the hold for me feature and that way your phone will literally carry on listening until the person comes back to start to speak to you. And when that happens, it'll actually alert you that they've come back. That way you're not just sitting there listening to that annoying music that they normally have on loop. This is a brilliant feature turn it on day one. Okay, the next tip, staying within the phone settings, just like we did before, go to the phone app, hit the three lines, top left corner, settings. There is another feature here that you should switch on on day one, and it's called direct my call. So when you're trying to navigate an annoying automated system when you're calling, I don't know, your bank or travel agent or something like that, this actually creates a really easy way to navigate those systems using transcriptions and options as opposed to having to sit there and listen to it. You can actually just see it on the screen. You can also enable the faster menu options so you can navigate to those specific options without having to listen to them, read it out in some cases that is. And with this tick box on, it will automatically show the options as soon as you make that phone call to an automated service, essentially getting you through to an actual human being as quickly as possible. And just like the tip previous to this one, I see no downsides to switching this on, so you might as well. Okay, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. This is part two or three. I have saved some bonus tips for you guys, but part three, just so you know, is all about how to optimize your phone fully on day one and how to secure the device with the best security settings. And there's actually one setting when it comes to optimization, which I cannot believe is switched off. So definitely watch that after this one. But for now, here's a few more tricks as a reward for staying this long. So back within the settings menu, if you go to notifications, at the top of this page, you'll see notification history. This is actually switched off by default. And if you switch this on, let's say you accidentally swipe away a notification for something important. This will actually keep a log of every notification that comes through to your phone. And there'll be a long list of things that you can go back through. That way you're less likely to lose that important information. Staying within the settings menu and the notification section, here's something else to look at. If you scroll down, right at the bottom of this page, almost like they don't want you to know that it's there is the enhanced notification option. This is switched off on day one. The great thing about this is it gives you suggested actions and replies automatically when you get notifications. Make sure you're happy with what it says here. And if you are, just hit next. And there you go, those are active. Okay, on that note, if you guys wanna optimize and fully secure your device the right way on day one, that thumbnail is on screen right now. If you missed part one, that will be linked in the description and in the top pinned comment. I appreciate you guys for watching all the way to the end. If you just subscribed, See you in the next one. Don't be late.